Have you ever said to yourself, I would love to sew, but I just don't have time because I'm too busy being a mom to my kids. Or I would love to sew, but I'm too busy working a full-time job or being a student or whatever the case may be. This video is really for any busy person who wants to find a way to fit sewing or a creative hobby into their busy life. In this video, I will first share why it is so important and vital that you do make time for your creative endeavors and why it is so worthwhile to do so. I will then go on to share practical tips and advice from me that I've learned as a mom of four over the years on how to fit sewing or a creative hobby into your busy day. Let's jump into it. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off this video with talking to you about why it's so important to fit your creative endeavors, your sewing, whatever it is that excites you into your day, and why it's absolutely never something that you should feel guilty about. Before we jump into that, I'd just like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a future historical sewing video from me. I'd love to have you join this little historical sewing community that we've created here. So I'm going to start off this discussion with an analogy. So if you've ever been on an airplane before, you'll be familiar with those safety messages they play at the beginning of the flight, where they familiarize you with the safety protocol if the oxygen levels in the plane ever dip below a certain point. Oxygen masks will drop down from the ceiling to every passenger, and they always tell you that if you're a parent and you have a child next to you, that you should put your mask on first and then help your child with their mask. So in the past, before becoming a parent, I would always think of how selfish that seemed. That doesn't make any sense. But now as a parent, I totally understand it. And I also understand its analogy to other parts of life. So obviously the reason why this safety message is given on the plane is because if you are suffocating yourself, you're not going to be able to help anyone around you either. The only way you can properly help others is if you are first able to breathe and your body is functioning properly. And that is a perfect analogy for so many areas of parenting. As parents, we are constantly giving out to our children, filling our children's buckets, their needs, whatever they may be. But if we're not filling our own needs and if we're not filling our own bucket, then we're not going to be able to care for anyone around us. And let me tell you, if you are here watching this video right now, chances are that sewing is one of your needs that you need to be filled and you're probably struggling on how to do that right now. And that's probably why you've come to this video. So let me just urge you to consider sewing or whatever your creative hobby is, whatever excites you, consider it as being one of your vital self-care practices. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here watching this video. It's obviously very important to you. And if you're stifling yourself creatively, you're never going to be as effective a parent as you could be if you were creatively fulfilled and doing the things that excite you. Even on a practical level, if sewing or fulfilling your creative hobby is taking time away from other more practical considerations, it will still always overall benefit you, your children, and your family. When you are fulfilled as a mother or as a parent or as a person, you will always be able to more effectively carry out the tasks that you need to in your day. Okay, so now let's talk about the issue of time. We all know that there are only 24 hours in a day, and if we're busy, there are usually more things to do than there is time to do them. So how on earth are we going to fit something creative like sewing into our busy day? First of all, I'd like to talk about the issue of time wasters. No matter how busy we are, I can almost guarantee you that if you analyzed your day, you'd see pockets of time, an hour here, two hours here, half an hour there, where you are Spending time on something that really is not something that's super vital to you or to what you want to be achieving in your life. And chances are you can shave a lot of that time off by just becoming more conscious of where your time goes. So when I'm talking about time wasters, I'm thinking of things like social media, watching TV, just taking more time than necessary on things in general. I'm not saying that you should just constantly be productive, constantly be checking things off your list. I'm not saying that at all because it is important to have veg out time where we're just relaxing, just thinking or scrolling social media. But 
I'm just saying that we need to become more conscious of where our time is going so we can ask ourselves if what we're spending our time on is truly what we want to be doing. When we become more conscious of where we're spending our time, we can then just create more sort of a time budget. Okay, I'm only going to spend one hour a day on social media, or I'm only going to spend this next 10 minutes on social media. You can even set a timer, things like that. So now I'm going to talk about prioritization. This is another vital part about fitting things into our day when we're a busy person. And I'm going to give you another analogy. This is the rock and jar analogy. I'd like you to picture a jar about this big and imagine that this jar represents your day, your 24 hour day. And then picture a whole bunch of rocks on in front of you on the table. Some of them are very big and some of them are tiny little pebbles. And these rocks represent all the things that you need to get done in your day. Now the big rocks represent the super very important vital task and then the small little pebbles represent things that aren't very important at all. So if you were to take all those tiny pebbles and put them in the jar and then attempt to put the big rocks in on top, the pebbles would take up half or more of the room and then your big rocks would not fit in the jar. But if you were to dump them all out and start over and put in all your big rocks first and then pour all the tiny pebbles in, the pebbles would flow into all the crevices that are not being filled by the big rocks and that in that way you'd be able to fit in all the rocks into your jar. Now apply this to your day. You need to sit down with yourself and think or even compile a list of what tasks are vital and what tasks are optional or what tasks are in fact totally meaningless and can absolutely be cut out of your day. Once you've determined this, you can prioritize your day effectively. For me, this actually means that if there's something that I absolutely need to get done during a certain day, I will often just do that thing first before I do the less important thing. In this way, you'll get all your important things done and then you'll still have time to do your less important things and you won't be suffering as a result of neglecting the vital things in your life. When we're a mom, it is also very important to be flexible with our life and ask ourselves if what we're spending time on or what we're considering vital is really as vital as we thought it was before we had kids or before we became so busy. There's always room for flexibility, change and growth. And part of being a mother or a parent is learning to flow and change with the different seasons of life and accept that in some seasons, your house is going to be more messy. And that's just a part of having kids in your house. Or in some seasons, you're not going to be able to stay on top of certain areas of your life the way you could when you were less busy. And accepting that and learning to flow with it is an essential part of still maintaining efficiency and productivity in your life, even when you are a busy parent or just a busy person in general. Now, another point I'd like to bring up is setting boundaries and asking for help. So setting boundaries becomes even more important when you are a parent because you have all these people who are needing things from you and you still have needs yourself. You need to be able to parent yourself as well as parenting your children. That old oxygen mask analogy. And so part of this is setting boundaries. I can't tell you what this is going to look like in your life, but I can tell you that for me, this looks like taking time out of my day every day for a walk by myself. Now, this doesn't necessarily actually happen every single day, but it is my goal. And I always find that when I can fit that walk in by myself, it makes a big difference to my overall well-being. For me, this also looks like asking for help from my husband, asking for help with the kids or around the house. This isn't something that comes naturally to me. I'm the type of person who feels like I need to do everything myself. Now, in terms of your sewing practice, this might look like setting boundaries, like, okay, everybody, I'm going to be sewing for the next half an hour, so please don't bother me or please play quietly by yourself. Even setting boundaries with yourself, saying, okay, self, I'm going to be sewing for the next half an hour, and unless the house is burning down around me or unless someone is seriously injured, I'm just going to keep sewing until my timer goes off. And sometimes setting boundaries with ourselves is actually more difficult but more rewarding than even setting boundaries with other people. So keep that in mind. Okay, now the one last practical tip I'd like to suggest to you about how to fit sewing into your day is about setting timers. Setting timers is something I'm actually coming back to in my own life because 
I've actually become a lot busier just in the last few months, not just with my parenting and with my sewing, but also with my whole online enterprise that I'm creating at the moment, my YouTube channel, my blog, and my course and everything. Setting timers. First of all, I'm going to say you can set a timer for your sewing time. A great tip I heard from a mom a long time ago is to set a 30 minute timer and to work on your sewing in 20 or 30 minute intervals throughout the day. No matter how busy we are, we can always find 20 or 30 minutes sprinkled throughout the day to work on a sewing project. Maybe the baby just went down for a nap, or maybe you just put a pot of water on and you're just waiting for it to boil. Chances are you'll be able to take 20 minutes to go, you know, stick a couple pins in your seam or get a couple pattern pieces cut out, whatever the case may be. And it's amazing what you can accomplish with small but consistent efforts throughout each day. I'm also going to suggest to you setting a timer for other things, other more essential things. Let's just say your house is falling apart at the seams. <laughs> your house is a mess full of toys, full of dirty laundry, but you're too overwhelmed to know where to begin. I would suggest setting a timer can be helpful here too. Maybe you're going to fold laundry just for the next 20 minutes, or maybe you're going to take 20 minutes to organize a drawer in your house. Something like that. I would also suggest setting a timer can be helpful to set boundaries around those time wasters that we talked about earlier. Things like social media. That's something I'm trying to do with myself right now because I've found that although I do need to check into social media a couple times a day just to get my posts done and to connect with you guys, my audience, I don't like spending a whole lot of time on there, certainly not more time than is necessary. And I do find social media has kind of a vacuum effect. It tends to just suck me in and I end up spending an hour on there without even attempting to. So I'm trying to set timers. I say, okay, I'm just going to spend five minutes or 10 minutes, just getting this post done, answering my messages, and then I'm gonna check out and get back to my day. That's also a really helpful tip for keeping those time wasters in check. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the alarm bell so you don't miss any future historical sewing videos from me. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and leave your comments and questions below as engaging with the video helps it get out to more people like you who will find this content helpful. Check out the accompanying blog post that will be linked in the description and I'll see you all on my next video.